Hi, my name is James D'Souza and I'm a psychology teacher. Hi, I'm Willem Vanderhorst and I'm a brand strategist. And every time I say that, Willem has a little chuckle to himself because I've said it in a particular way. This is Teaching Tangents. The completion, well, season three is over, but we're doing a couple of episodes towards the end of the year to kind of bring things together and explore our own interests. Like, subscribe, leave us a review, yes. five stars on wherever you listen to your podcast. This will help us not only get to more people, but also help us know that what we're doing is useful and interesting because it's useful and interesting for us, but we want it to be useful and interesting for you. Yeah, absolutely. And teaching, teaching tangents is where we go on explorations of big questions like what's our purpose in life through to small questions like how do I improve my job? Yeah. And, and I guess today's this, a middle mid-sized question. <laughs> I think it, I was about to say that. I think I think this is a mid-sized question. I think it's a mid-sized question. Well, um, yeah, because it's one, it's hopefully a recurring one every year. That would be great if it is. It would be great if it is. Today, no, but I mean episode, so you have the opportunity. Okay, so I'll let you. Yeah, today. And this is not is, the same format as usual. I think you're going to be guiding this a lot more than me answering, although we'll we'll do both. That's true. It's not the same format as usual where I ask Willem a question and he makes up some profound answers and interesting things always. Yeah. And but, before, this... but given we don't have a lot of people watching anyway, I don't know if this is going to be more or less interesting, but I knew that some people who watch do enjoy it. So tell us if you enjoy this more than yes. the other regular format or not, or less. Or less, yes, please do. And the, the theme, I'm going to call it a theme of the episode, is completion completing the year and if, if we had to make it into a question the question would be do you have any particular practices that you run through at the end of every year that would be the if i was asking villain a question that would be the question yes and then my answer would be not exactly aside from the things <laughs> that you told me james you were doing to complete and then i thought oh i should do something like that too and just before we started recording you went and looked at the notes that you made yeah. And of course, the notes that I made that on my thing, that on my note that was completing 2020 and creating 2021 was just after a conversation I had with you, you telling me like you did something and I was like, oh, I should do the same. But I like, unlike you, of course, do not have anything structured because my books on structuring things are the ones that I bought on your advice and they're not read yet, like Atomic Habits that I've had for, when did I buy that? I bought it in the, I bought it earlier this year. And the you journal, deep, the mind journal, work, I, the, the mind journal, I think the, my, my last entry into the mind journal was in possibly September, but I think I started in May. I added a couple in July and August and then one in September. But hang on, you do journal, don't you? You used to do it in Rome. Yeah, but my journaling and meditation streak is like just kind of died at the moment. I've been not really maintaining at all my journaling. But yes, typically I, I journal in Rome, which is my note taking up. And you do meditate, like, although your streak is not... Yeah, I meditated this morning, but a bit, I did 10 minutes rather than 20. And my journaling is just off whack a bit. I've been journaling like once or twice a week instead of every day. I've, I've just been very bad. Because very bad. you're very And I should bad get person. up earlier and maintain my meditation practice. And I'm not doing that. Because I think this, one of the things about... A different an episode topic like this the... and completion no no it's not because oh, completing the year one of the core things for me has been or two of the core things have been meditation and journaling mm -hmm. and i think they're essential and i i when you said you meditate 20 minutes i was like okay i might do 10 but most times i do three three minutes <laughs> three minutes but, but that's enough i i mean i'd rather do three minutes every day you know for a month than trying to do 20 minutes and be like oh, i can't be bothered <laughs> so i i've been doing most recently i've been doing three minutes and just making sure i do it but on average i'll do 10 minutes i really like calm and i think this does relate to what we're about to talk about True. so at the end of every year i'm going I'm to start off by saying what i do okay. or how it's evolved yes. because i did i opened my evernote and i can see that my wife davina and i we have completion completing years going back to 2012 so we've got 2012. so first you do that with your wife is that part of the, the yes thing or? 
Yes, that's part of it. That we we have a conversation and we look at what happened in the year. And then that's how it started. I don't question. know how many years ago. I have a question. Aside from because yeah. I, I was going to make a joke about having a wife, but I thought maybe that's not necessary. But uh, however, <laughs> do you find it's it's an important part of that practice to be doing it in a conversation with someone rather than your own dialogue tr- personally? Uh, for me, or is, no. d- is it the, is it just equal? It does, like, I, no, for not... for me, no. For Davina, yes. Okay, so it depends. Some people m- yes. would find it useful to talk it out. Some people just. I'm used to just like thinking by myself and talking with myself. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> but, or to but, my. I mean, my excuse is I talk to my laptop, but that's what I do when I'm filling a list. I'm filling a list, and I'm talking to my laptop. I'm really talking to myself, but. Oh, you do that? Wow. Yeah, not fully out loud, right? Oh, right. <laughs> Occasionally no, yeah, I, out loud, but that's that's just yeah. because I'm insulting my laptop because it's not doing what I want. But. <laughs> But I wish that we could have like the whole, you know, Harry Potter thing where you could put a wand next to our brain and pull out our thoughts and then drop them into a thing and just keep them. That'd be so awesome. <laughs> okay, but the closest I can get to that is journaling, but also having a conversation and thinking about, and it started off at the end of the year, I'd go, what happened in the year? And then what did I, then it became, and then after what happened in the year, like what do I want to happen in the next year? Right. And then it became, what are all the good things that happened in the year? Mm-hmm. And what are all the terrible things that happened in the year? And then, okay, close that. Now, what's the next year going to be about? And then it's do you, just... Do you add any more... any extra, I don't know, categorization or thoughts or on top of, you know, good things and bad things that happened? I say good yeah. and bad, is, I, I, I don't know if that's the right denominator, but you did say good, you did say great and terrible. I, I did. I did. And then it just, it became. So, I mean, did you keep it mostly factual or more than that? I'm guessing more, but I don't know. Both. It, <laughs> it, it starts off very like, <clears throat> and it's, the interesting part is, or I think this is interesting. It's so easy to write down all, all the crappy stuff that happened. Right. But it, I, for me, it's also easy to come at, at this point of the year. And I'm like, wait a minute, we're close to Christmas, end of the year. What have I done? Like what happened yeah, yeah. this went so fast i didn't do anything yeah. this year i'm sure yeah. i didn't do and this is my i have this light motive i just i have this thing going on yeah, yeah that yeah. i always say i'm not doing enough i'm not doing the things i think i should be doing mm-hmm. um uh and i'm you know well i'm a, i'm big i was gonna say i'm a failure i'm exaggerating my point massively right i don't really say that but it is going mm-hmm. in that direction now I tell you. So it does help to go through it. I'm like, oh, I actually did all these things. Yeah. So yeah. whether they but, were exactly what I think I ought to be doing, that's another conversation. But I was like, I, okay, I did fill this year with things that I did actually. And I have. Or that happened. I used to. I used to feel that way too. And then the. I don't like. I never really liked the idea of like I did when I was younger. Let's have a goal. Set New Year's resolutions. New. I, I think I wrote a blog post why New Year's resolutions suck and why they're terrible because <laughs> they just become another thing to beat yourself up with. And Darren Brown talks about goals and the nonsense that they are a lot of the time in his book Happy, which I highly. I recommend. have to read. We talked about that last time. Yeah. So the but the thing that helps with what that sense of what did I do. I've done nothing because I have that too. The thing that's helped me with that is having some areas that I'm going to explore. Mm-hmm. So I don't really set goals. And what, what Davina and I do is we pick themes for the year. Yeah. What's our theme for the year going to be? And I like the evolved. idea of themes. That's the idea I, I shared last time or last year with the mottos as well. Sorry. Now, yeah. What was your motto from last year? You had all this year. I don't had think one. I had one. No, I did. Wait, did I? Wait, wait, wait. You had one for 20. 20- 20 I, I did i did i did i i had so i i actually had two uh but they were bird related too <laughs> so i had bird by bird uh, uh which is uh yep. the title of a book about writing and life by anne lamott that i highly recommend which i've got but haven't read oh uh, it's great it's a, it's a quick book it's very quick to read if you want to up your numbers uh based on and categorization can be also stuff that we talked about last week so the list of books you read is a category of things that you do during the year and even Netflix TV shows and movies. I yep. mean, ca- those are categories for me, for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so Bird by Bird is about step by step. 
Uh, and the quote that the title of the book comes from, and I, I'm sure I'd said that in a previous episode, but I'll say it again because I really like it. Yeah. Uh, was 30 years ago, my older brother, who was 10 years old at the time, was trying to get a re report written on birds that he'd had three months to write, which was due the next day. Yeah. We were out in our family cabin in Obelinas, and he was at the kitchen table close to tears, surrounded by binder paper and pencils and unopened books about birds, immobilized by the hugeness of the task ahead. Mm -hmm. Then my father sat down beside him, put his arm around my brother's shoulder and said, bird by bird, buddy, just take it bird by bird. Mm -hmm. So awesome. So last year and this year felt like, and the other thing that I put together that I had as a motto, as a theme was birds of a feather flock together. Uh, and the idea for me this year was, okay, you know, well, actually, funny enough, don't beat myself up. Things are going to happen step by step. It's mm -hmm. taking a lot longer to get settled in Paris with the pandemic than I thought it would. Uh, so this year is about taking, taking it step by step to make life work, whatever happens. Uh, Hang on, that was other, 20, that's this year. This year, you had that for this year. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, I did. Brilliant. Uh, last, at the end of last year, it felt like 2020 was a, a, a wash, not a wash, but just a, it was such an odd year for everybody. And for me, it was uh, really rough on finance and work. I mean, it was not horrible, right? I'm still talking first world problems. I have an apartment and everything else, right? But just, you know, there's three months in the spring, I made zero money. I didn't make any money in August. I made little money in like I did. Well, I did work a lot more towards the end of the year, but it was, uh, it, it was not enough to have me think by the time December and January 2021 came around that it was like you know sorted. So it felt like there was a lot of building step by step, and to not beat myself up about it. <clears throat> and then birds of a feather was this idea that. It was, it's been also difficult to create ties and feel like I have a community of friends and people I know in Paris. Mm -hmm. And this is not something that I kind of need as a theme to focus on, generally speaking, because I kind of do that naturally. Mm. But I thought as a focus, it's also important to keep, in, to keep it in mind. I'm reminded of some articles that I think we commented on in the past about how middle-aged men can tend to feel lonely and not have friends. Yeah, Even, and particularly ones that, which is not my case, but my case might be on the on the lonely side because I'm single. But I do have like vast networks of friends, but a mm -hmm. lot of them are abroad, and I didn't have that many of them in Paris, and it was a complicated time to make new friends in Paris in 2020. Anyhow, all that to say that I wanted to have an eye out for hanging out with people that I, I more so than just friends, but mm -hmm. really having really great people that I have the same kind of conversations with you. Mm -hmm. on whatever other area of life uh yeah. so what, what i mean by that is for example because i play games i have gaming friends yeah uh, and we have an activity-based friendship most of the time and the conversations might be great but particularly revolve around games and it's okay it's it's you know they might revolve around some other things occasionally but at least they're really great conversations around games yeah. and showed interest yeah uh, so that's what i meant by different different possible different areas so so yeah, so that's that's the the kind of two themes that I was focusing on this year that I were what that I forgot during the second half of the now, year. This is great. This is really great because in the process of choosing something at the beginning of a year, it starts to inform the whole year. And it's only when you get to the end of the year, you go back and that allows you to have some kind of just like you did just then, some kind yeah. of reflection of like, oh, okay, what? yeah. The bird community groups is certainly something that I've built up. It's funny because, well, for example, just as a this week, I was entertaining quite a bit and I'm entertaining again on Tuesday. And I joined several groups that I had not joined uh, uh, before this year mm -hmm. um, or barely, but or, or at least participated with more. So a, a writing group, an English speaking writing group in Paris. Mm -hmm. um, so I had, you know, friends over for a gaming night on Tuesday. I had other friends come over for dinner on Thursday. I was out with old family friends on Friday. I went out to show yesterday. So, um, and I'm, I'm having a, other friends come over on Tuesday night. Uh, that's the group of people that do the same job as me. So there's a small group of people that we exchange with and just essentially just chat. We started a, pot, we started a sort of podcast slash event online yep. thing that we ran twice. 
Mm-hmm. So we're trying to look at, you know, how can we keep chatting together and so that it's beneficial both from a professional and personal standpoint. And just the, even if it's not, I don't know if it's going to be anything business-wise, but it's nice to be talking to other people who are independent and because I don't have colleagues to talk to on a regular basis. So hmm. just sharing stuff of how life, work life is going with people who have similar jobs as I I have is, 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 um, uh valuable i don't know just looking for the right word i think you what you're highlighting and the way you're reflecting is what makes picking a theme useful for the year yeah. rather than having specific kind of yeah. like i have to do this yeah so it's the that's what i like from it rather than a resolution I, i'm sure i shared this before because yeah. we did a similar episode a year ago so this is i learned this from a, a podcast guest who's a game designer And Mm -hmm. he says he doesn't choose a new New Year's resolution, but he chooses a motto. And it's something that could be an inspiring motto, a a short sentence, a few words, but it's similar to the themes. I think it's similar to the themes that you said. Mm -hmm. He uses proverbs, sayings, expressions, and I I started to do the same. The idea being that what what are the ideas, themes, or values that you want you to live by for the year? Mm Mm-hmm. And he, and he told me that he usually, you know, he has a set of several, but adds one that, you know, if that's the direction he wants his life to take. Okay. And not a direction as in a goal to achieve, but just, I, just exactly all that I said, just that was, you know, it's okay to go step by step. Yeah. Or yep. whatever. Yep. The, the, the other thing that Davina and I started to do was look at all the areas of our life and then we'd start to group or, or to use the straightforward good bad things that happen mm-hmm. and then we started to qual- try and quantify that like because if because we find we'd go around in circles in the conversation right like, towards the end of the year so we'd actually say how was that a, like that particular area rate out of five for the year like and we had things like uh i had things like my sense of community my family like being a dad was a big area for me for a few years, like how I felt about myself, my physicality. And like I had uh, my job and career as another one and I'd rate them. And then mm. I found that process of actually talking about it and then actually picking some, some way of like some way of quantifying it helped me go, okay, That's that was that year. What's next? How did you rate it? Did you rate it based on your satisfaction of the area or where you think you produced results or performed or how did you? It's the first time that I did it, it was just a straight out of five. And then. Yeah, but that, based on just whatever, whatever you instinct yeah, says. Zero, zero is terrible. Five was like, yeah, super amazing. And then what I started to do was, and I've changed it since. Then what I started to do is have the all the areas mapped out for the year and then two or three things I wanted to accomplish in that. And then I would get a bit more anal about it and be like, how many of the things that I wanted to accomplish, did I accomplish? Mm. And then that would, would, I might have two in the area of family or three. If I did three out of three in the family, that's great. That's, you know, like that, trying to make it a bit more quantified. And that was like when we did that in 2018. Now the, the problem with all that is, it takes shed loads of time and you have to, and it doesn't. It's How not long did so you spend on this goals. process together? We, Approximately. We, t- we tend to spend, go out and have a coffee and talk for a couple of hours. I mean, that's, I did, that's, I. that's what I did for a couple of hours. Just probably doing that. The thing that I just was starting to read through that list. It was a couple of but, hours on a Sunday afternoon and I did it in January yeah. this year. I'm pretty sure. Well, actually I have the date. I'll tell you exactly when I did it. January 10th. I did that on January 10th this year. And I looked at the past year and I looked at what I wanted for this year. Right. <clears throat> yeah, I, I think it does. It does make a. I think it's important to look at what you kind of said you would do. And then did you do it? We didn't, didn't you? Yeah. Because otherwise it just becomes easy for me to just sweep it under the carpet and pretend everything's fine. Yeah. but Or just keep it as an opportunity to beat yourself up. Yeah. Rather yeah, than a, just look at, same. for me, it's, it's looking at, okay, these are all the things that I did. And I didn't progress on my idea that I wanted to write a book, for example, because mm-hmm. that's a, that's a regular occurrence. <laughs> uh, 
but I'm like, all right, well, clearly that was not my, I didn't put my focus or energy on that. I didn't, mm -hmm. I had other things to do. I did all these other things. Mm -hmm. I keep saying I want to write a book, but clearly everything else seems to be more important because otherwise I would be, I would be writing more. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, and I did an exercise with a coach a few months ago. So that I think I shared on one of the episodes on looking at time during the week. That was slightly uh, yes. different, but it's an interesting yeah. one. Yeah. And I was like, I looked at all the time during the week and I was, and then he was like, oh yeah, so when are you going to write? When are you going to write? You just have to take time from other things or be honest about what you're going to do and not do because you have mm -hmm. a lot of plans mm -hmm. in your head on how much you should be doing in a week, but you only have so many hours. Mm -hmm. I was like, hmm, that's, uh, that's true. <laughs> it's like, actually, that's and true. And I like, I like something... I think it was James Clear, from, the author of Atomic Habits, who said something like, if you don't choose where to spend your time, other things will choose for you. Yes, exactly. And I have a lot of that go on, which is typically, it's completely typical. And I'm sure a lot of people, if they're listening, will find, just, will find themselves in this. And it's easier to be reactive than put your effort into doing something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's easier if you have an office job to wait for somebody to ask you something or wait for an email to come in that you have to respond to mm -hmm. rather than do mm -hmm. the thing that you're supposed to do. That's kind of like not really what you want to be doing right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And have I have that one. a lot. I've been procrastinating my, uh, my, um, I need to write this. It's not a memoir. It's a uh, extended, the, the, uh, I'm in the process of Is this validating the qualification my master's for, yeah. Uh, yeah, to validate yeah. my master's degree. And I have this whole thing to write that I've been very successfully procrastinating. <laughs> and that one, but that Tim one, Urban. I'm very clear. I really do not want to do. So I'm like, oh, wow, the whole week going by and I did not find any time for that. That's really surprising. <laughs> yes, I do. I love Tim Urban's TED talk about procrastination monster. Oh, it's fantastic. It's, it's, it's very it's good. You're illustrating that very well. Yeah. Uh, the funny, the thing I was going to say was that in the seven habits of highly effective people, Stephen Covey's now classic kind of book. Habit yes, I one haven't is, read that either. Books about habits are not in things I read. <laughs> well, the, habit one is be proactive, which is basically you're in charge of where you spend your time. It's up to you where you spend How is it. that a habit? The the idea of, of you of the, what you said was great. The, the idea that you have a choice about how you respond to things, or you have a choice about what about your behaviour. You don't have to be knocked around all the time. A bit like being you're responsible. I'm yeah. I have a choice about how I respond to things. But it is very difficult. It takes a whole. I mean, the reason why I and I'm, but it's going out of the window. But the reason why I was uh, and I could still pick up my twenty minute meditation a day habit is because I was part of a course where somebody was checking every week whether I was doing it or not. And I had to report. Aha, uh -huh. accountability. And I, so it was part of the part of the different, so I had a structure that was inside a course with other people who were all doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. And I had to say like, you know, wh which days did I do or not do the meditation? And among other things, but that's, if I had not had somebody for a year follow me and ask me like whether you're doing it or not doing it one I would not have done it as consistently two I wouldn't have seen that there's value in doing it so much so that I decided to keep doing it by myself afterwards yeah like nobody now nobody's checking on me I'm doing that because I think it's great mm. um but it's easy it's easy for that to go out which is also what I'm noticing at the moment I have a lot more work in the morning, uh, which I'm not used to. <laughs> so at the moment, I have a lot of work, which I'm like, wow, this is really like, what? This is, I'm not used to having this much work. This is people are asking <laughs> things of me. What the, what's going on? And I have to get up in the morning. So to do my 20 minute <laughs> meditation, I would need to get up even earlier, which is not really my thing. Mm. It used to be my thing. It depends if I have a regular rhythm or not. It's just, yeah. No, it's, I mean, it's not my thing to get it in the morning. I, I went to see a really great comedian yesterday. And he was like, yeah, I just, you know, I don't really want to do things. I'm perfectly happy to not do anything. And I was like, oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> but of course, you're doing something. You're never doing nothing. Yeah, but I think he's mostly like contemplating and wasting. I mean, I, I could relate a lot. He was sharing how he has a lot going on in his head. And he's just perfectly happy to do nothing because there's already enough going on there. 
I, which I, I have can, a lot, and waste I, time, read news on the internet, and think about random jokes. Oh yeah, yeah. I I'm not. I I don't know how I've managed to push myself a little bit more. Maybe I don't know if. Well, I think it's also thanks to discipline and like stuff like having done coaching courses and that's work true. and work early in my career where I was trained to have like serious amounts of discipline. Cause it's funny because I'm always, as I said, berating my, and I think I shared this in another episode. Uh, um I was, as you know, I'm always berating myself for like I'm not doing enough. And then I start talking and people are like, You do a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, Yeah, but yeah. I haven't written a book. <laughs> This is this is why the idea of themes trumps goals. So yes, it was only in, it was only it was only in 2019 that my wife and I started creating themes. So in 2019, our theme was listening, learning, love, and laughter. It became a lot of themes, but they're good themes. Alliterate, and then we and that's I great. So that by the end of the year, you can see was yes. there listening? What did yes. we do? Was there laughter? Yes. Which could be measured by did we go to see stand up comedians, watch funny TV shows, or there's no limit to how whatever. we can I'm just making it. this up on the spot, but that's yeah. what is that's what I like about that kind of thing. Yes, exactly. It's, it's like it's not okay. Have I progressed with the number of words I wrote on my book? <laughs> Which is, I mean, it has its place, those things, but it they, does. It but just what, like, I'll uh, tell you what, in, in what I was just sharing, if I was really serious about wanting to write a book. I would somehow, and maybe this is something I should be doing actually, um, to well to take something in the same way that I had somebody check on my, my meditation, I should have somebody check on not whether I've written a book or not, mm. but whether I spend half an hour or whatever time writing every day. Uh, and read, I know that read, this, and I've been told Atomic that I, Habits I, I, is all about this. So I, I'll take it off my shelf. Maybe this is something I could push through and read before the end of the year. <laughs> <laughs> you're so funny so human being but the, uh, within the th so when we created the themes i then picked like three things so it right. just became my three things for the year so what were your uh, three things this year so oh i'm, I'm building towards it so oh, and sorry, I'm, I, I, i'll shut up okay <laughs> so 2019 was the first year we did themes 2020's theme was connection celebration changes and challenges now that was my wife and I creating it. That's what we created. And then I had, my, she picked three things and I picked three things. And then we picked three things that we were going to do together because otherwise I'd be golf doing my thing. I wouldn't even care about what she was doing at all. <laughs> but the idea of us having things together was, that was a, that was a bit of a game changer for me because then it, it forced me to not be so obsessed with my own tiny little things. And then we did the same thing for this year. Now, a couple of other things to add to this, at, at the risk of sounding really cheesy, every month, Davina and I take a picture of ourselves and I have it as my screensaver on my phone. And then I use Canva and I put on our theme for the year on that. And every That's month cool. we change the picture because if it was the same picture, it just becomes like nothing. It just disappears. So every month we take a picture. Every month I put the theme on there. So I'm reminded of, okay, what's this year about? And I found that has made a huge difference to what's going on and when I'm thrown off course and what's happening. And like, it's there on my phone. Mm. I like that. But it's, it's changing the picture every month. And I change the background every month as well. I find, have you heard of Unsplash? I've heard of it. What is it again? It's like a free, like, free pictures by a community of photographers. And the pictures oh. are all super amazing. Like, right. you can uh, they're, rights, they're free, they're copyright free or, or yeah. on Creative Commons or something. Yeah. But, and, and they ask if you do use it that you cite the photographer. Yeah which I do when I, I use them a lot for presentations at school and I, I, I put the, the link to the photographer, but I, they have some amazing like landscape photos, just amazing high quality photos. I take the photo and I, I change the background on my phone every month. So the screensaver is my wife and I, the background is a different background and I have like a quote or something. And sometimes I'll change the quote. Sometimes I won't, but the, that every month has me, reconnect with what my year's about 
And this ties in with something about reflection. I was keeping a journal for ages. And then do you I do read... that like on, at a certain date? Do you have a reminder for the month? <clears throat> it's it, it's it's around... this is the kind of stuff that would easily go very fast out of the window for me that I would forget. And I, it's or it's around the first weekend of the new month. Okay. It's around that. And both Davina and I will take a picture, become a thing, like we'll take a picture together. So we'll probably take and a that's picture. Cool. Regardless of, I mean, I think both are great ideas. One is changing the background or the, the background of screensaver of the phone. Because I, I, there's a painting I love and I've had it for years, but mm. it's true that it is, it's not expressive it of fades. what I want for the year or it's not, exp well, well, it's Nighthawks. It's not particularly, well, it's great for certain moods, but it's not really necessarily what I want for the year. Yeah. It's like, you know, lonely people alone in the middle of the night <laughs> <laughs> even you can have that picture but then the, i have the themes on it so it does re, it reconnects me so when i read um, have you read essentialism by greg no. McEwen? Mm -hmm. so he's very serious about journaling right okay. and his his suggestion if you want to keep up a journaling habit is write a bit less than you want to than you feel like write a bit less than you feel like writing Oh, sometimes so just to do the journal, I write like two sentences just to yeah. say that I've done it. Yeah. But the thing that was a game changer for me was he says every three months or every how often, look back over your journal entries and reflect and try and find what's been happening, what the, what's yeah, the, I don't do that. what the headline is. I was like, wow, that's so cool. That because is pretty cool. It, it really made me think about what's been happening. I was like, oh, okay, I started to see patterns of things. I mean, I'm a, like, I love seeing patterns and stuff, but like, I would see my moods, how my moods would shift. And like, I'd be worrying a lot about like my job in one part of the year. And I'm like, okay, why am I worrying about it? It would just, it would force me to reflect. Mm. So I think those two things that the You're regular- Definitely, you are reflecting. You're looking back at the past yeah. three months anyway. Journaling. Is great, but journaling without reflection, I think, is isn't as powerful as it could be. I journal and, without reflection. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was for years journaling without reflection. It would, it, but there's so much power in that. And then the idea of changing my screensaver every month connected me to what mm. my year was about. So this year, Davina and I picked the through acceptance and healing comes happiness and abundance. Okay. And we called it Aha, A H H A. <laughs> acceptance healing happiness abundance yeah, yeah i got this, it this is what happens when you get married you do stuff like that now i think those are the cool things to do not every not every couple does that but i think it's great to do that within that i created my three things for the year and then i started taking my three things for the we created i created my three things she had her three we had our three together and then every a bit like connected to the journal reflections i would take my three things for the year and then pick three simple things per month that i was going to do to forward each thing and then i'd split it up and break it down into my things for the week roughly mm. and it could be tiny it could be like so one of one of the i'm gonna i can't remember what it was for the year but the this year but the it forces that kind of reflection which i think is very important because i'm connecting the day to day with the year. So one of my uh, things for this year was maintaining health and well-being, being cancer free for 2021 and 18% average body fat for the year. So then one of the things I do in the week is like so fast. That does sound like goals. I eat properly. The difference between the goal and this is I created the theme and that informs the goal. When I just have a goal for the sake of it, it means okay. nothing, nothing. And then it just becomes a thing that I'm doing for the sake of doing, rather yeah. than Davina and I having a quality conversation about what's our year going to be. Okay, this year it's going to be whatever. And then, okay, what's it going to, what are we can do together? One of the things was sorting out our home and redoing our home. And, and we did that. It, and it, it leaves scope for things to change through the year because i'm connecting to it i'm zo i call it zooming in and out so i'm zooming out for the whole year but zooming into this week or today and Very that true. constant that constant flow of the year the week the month the quarter the journal the reflections 
is what keeps me experiencing that I'm making progress, however small. So, and what it really avoids is that end of year thing of like, what have I done? It's like, oh yeah, we have all this cool stuff. I wonder, when did you start doing things like that? <clears throat> the, the picking the themes or the... Completing the year, picking the themes, just uh, the practices. The first... I'm just, sorry, this is where I was going with the thought. Yeah. Uh, given, just to bring it, to circle it back a little bit to our focus or our audience most of the time is about our pupils, students, young people who have questions now, not only, of course, because we're having the conversations relevant to any age, obviously. Yeah. But uh, often our focus is on your pupils or my students and the questions they have. So mostly young people. And I was wondering if I did that at that age or when you started doing things like that and whether it was, I mean, I think it's appropriate at any age. Um, but I think, yeah, the sooner you start that kind of habit, the more interesting it gets, I think. And I did have occasionally those kinds of habits when I was much younger. And then I stopped for a long time, I think. And I picked it back up a few years ago, it, broadly. But I've never been very good at having those kinds of like completing the year. And even journaling and meditating started a few years ago. It's, it's relatively recent in the grand scheme of things. I think the there's a few things... So it really started when I was 21 and, and, okay. and it was... So you did the, start pretty young. Yeah, the turning point was reading The Seven Habits and then right. doing courses of Landmark worldwide as well. That, that shifted things. But it, And then I got like... I never really kept it up. It wasn't consistent. And then moving in with Davina before we got married and starting a blog. So my, the initial incarnation of my blog started in 2005 and, and I go back and I read it. I cringe massively. Oh my god! But I'm I not started writing to, anything in my website or blog, or I started to write end of year reflections mm. in about two thousand and seven, maybe okay. something like that. And that was when we got married in two thousand and seven. So it, like the or maybe before that, and I would write like what happened, what I expected, and the it keeps. I find. Things like that help me not be so dark about life and so depressive and want to bring everybody down, even though my pupils accuse me of that all the time. They do. I'm accused yeah. of that, of being a grumpy, grumpy, grouchy often as well. The the pupils will say to me, I think, like, I think oh, they smile quite a lot at the same time. <laughs> exactly. The pupils will say things up to me, uh, you know, see you tomorrow. I say, well, maybe this might be our last lesson together. Really? <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, oh, you're so morbid. Yeah, but it's true. I might be in a car accident on the way home. I don't think I will, but you know. That, and then is, I'll say, pretty, that is pretty morbid. Come on, James. Uh, okay. Seriously. It is, but you know, it's a encouragement to make the most of what you have. It's also particularly snarky. It can be snarky. Is how you maintain your inner teenage, teenage child, teenager. I, I don't need any help to maintain teenager. my inner, te inner teenager. I don't need any help at all. No, I so, see, clearly you do not. I know <laughs> that <laughs> clearly not. Because this sounds like somebody, it's something that your snarky teenager would answer to a teacher, but you just do it the other way around. Correct. Yes. And all the skulls. Did you say that to your teachers when you are in high school? Did you ever say that? <laughs> that would be I don't think so. I don't think I did. I think I lived in fear a lot of teachers then. I was scared a lot of the time. This is something I'm still not used to as well. The uh, Just well, being a teacher. People the, rely that, on you, that, there's a serious, People There's a serious grown-up factor about being a teacher. <laughs> yes, there is. And, and I often kind of gloss over the language stuff because I teach and most of my classes, are they're all in English. But it just so happened we had a meeting this uh, this week. There were other people, so we switched to French at some point uh, at the end and saying goodbye. So so there's a, the polite form in French, right? So they use the polite form, oh. which suddenly brings me down to oh fuck, I'm old. I'm 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 old. And they're they're using the polite form with me. I managed not to swear so far in this episode. Oh, yes, sorry. Did. I just did. <laughs> this is not a swearing episode. I still I, will place it as this clean content. Wait a minute. So I apologize. Okay, so I just want to. So you're saying they use a polite form with you because, and that makes you feel old? 
Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I'm, I feel old already, but you know, but even more yeah. so. There's, a, there's like it, it's it, it accentuates. Yeah, it does. The it does. authority True. factor, the barrier, the fact that I'm old, I, I'm like this old sir. Yeah, it's true. Uh, and, and, it, and it makes it fo extremely formal because that's what the polite form is there for, uh, which I do enjoy that it doesn't exist in English, not in language. It exists yeah. otherwise, but yeah. you don't get it in the language. So it's, yeah. it's just a little bit easier on me, <laughs> from that perspective. Um, and in France, it's a topic, whether you use the polite form or the familiar form, and more and more businesses uh, inspired by a more kind of like, you know, American or Anglo centric perspective use familiar forms in the office. But it's also a tricky one because you use familiar form, but that doesn't mean there's no, you know, respect or whatever. Hierarchy. Oh, Hierarchy. Uh, which is even more so when you have the new forms of we're a flat structure like Google. There's no hierarchy. And then you're like, okay, so there's no hierarchy, but there is one. So you have to guess the hierarchy now. Um, anyway. Horrible. Anyhow. So, th so anyway, th that's that's all that I was saying. It's just, and I guess this is all about, I, you know, assuming the fact that I'm, you know, 42 and I'm 20 years older than some of the students that I teach. Having said that. Weird. It's still, those... it's still, it's still weird to, growing old is so strange. <laughs> It's really strange. I mean, it's like a lot of the memory goes nowhere. At the same time, I'm like, I don't know where those 20 years went by. I feel like I'm the same person because I am. Uh, yeah. I'm clearly not 20 anymore. And I look at them and I'm like, yeah, I'm not at all 20. <laughs> but I also don't feel like I'm old, but I am. Hmm. And now yeah. I'm not old, old, of course, right? They, but it's just older than I was. We're middle it's very, It's very strange. I can only imagine. And when I talk to my mother, and she's like, well, this is very, very weird. Where does the time go? Anyway, it's just life is funny. Having said Sorry. that, the, that was I don't think that made any sense. It, but. No, it, it, made, it made complete sense. I think you and I, we remember a time without the internet and we embrace technology. And I think that and, puts us in a really cool position. Yeah, I don't remember much of it without the internet. I mean, I got onto it when I was a teenager, but it was getting onto it was a thing already. I, I do remember if I make an effort, times with the Minitel, the ancestor to the internet that was like the French, the French network oh, really? with a little screen. Yeah, yeah, I'm a precursor and ancestor to the internet. I well, the first, the first public, time... the first public network with screens and monitors linked by the phone that was French only. Oh, wow. We had the equivalent of websites and chat rooms. And I when was 12 was going on those chat rooms. 12. Oh, wow. Even before 12. So, I did it when I was a kid. Because it was, I, I was, all the, the phone company gave one of these screen monitors to every family, basically. There was and it was the first, like and it was just like dark screen. And you had to, so you had the equivalent of websites, as in there were addresses, and it was 3615. 3615 was the, and then you had 3615 name of the thing, 3615, you know, yellow pages, 3616 wow. Pizza Express, whatever. Uh, wow, I never heard of you this. You didn't know that? Oh, yeah. No. no. So that's a big thing. Yeah, yeah. The Minitel. And 36, 35, 3617 was all the like expensive numbers and the, you know, just uh, hot chat rooms and. <laughs> sexy services so when i was 10 i was like "Ooh, let's go check it. of course it costs a lot of money to my parents so i would do that on a, like, try to get on a friend's thing and friend was like yeah my parents don't care about that it's like great let's go on these things to find out what's going on there. even then way back it was the, 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 the same thing of course always it's like always like, what makes money and what creates so interest funny. is is uh look there's this thing that made an ad on you know it seems to be sexual in nature of some kind it seems weird let's go find out what's going on there. i didn't access the internet for the first time until i was at uni in really? mind you I, well i hang on i went to uni in 1995 oh. a bit older oh yes you are a bit older that's why so i, I was not in uni yet yeah i was i was in 1995 i was not in, i was in high school still yeah that's... And it's around that time that I accessed the internet for the first time, 1995, 1996. And of course, where did we go first? Rotten.com. <laughs> Do you remember Rotten.com? Look at this thing. Yeah. It's got images yeah. of like yeah. really disgusting things. Yeah. 
yeah. yeah. <laughs> Some people died in a car crash. Really? What is that? Oh, wow. Look, it's the internet. The first thing I accessed was Monty Python's scripts. That was the first thing I looked at. That's pretty strong. I don't remember <laughs> what the first thing, I think I first found out uh, summer high school, and I can't remember if that was the first, it was probably not the first time I accessed, but I went to the States and AOL was big at that, at that point. So AOL chat rooms, which was, yep. you know, the, the, um, the doorway to the internet. Yeah. Uh, so there were people, uh, high schoolers showing me like, oh, look, this is AOL. And you, you can go in chat rooms. I spent a lot of, to- a lot of time in chat rooms then after that late 1990s, early 2000s. I met people through chat rooms and I hung out in chat rooms a lot. I did that for a while. Yeah, that was a thing. Why am I not surprised? I think we all did that, didn't we? I think, I think we it was did. A, All of which is to say. Oh, yeah. I hung out in the poetry set. Chat. I was writing poetry at that, like, for a short bit at that point. You don't write poetry still? No, I haven't written poetry in a long time. I still Why? Because you, you occasionally, okay, you occasionally write poetry. I should, wait, yeah. But we already, we already talked a bunch about how I should be writing more. So we've, <laughs> we've done that part. But the, all of this is to say that, yes, we're old. Yes, we're middle-aged. But the time pre-internet and embracing technology for what it is, I think our generation, people like you and I, are much more able to kind of roll with it than I think Apple has spoiled the younger generation they don't have to problem yeah. solve with technology yeah no, no, it's, it's not a question of proving out. yourself is that we we were at the beginning having to understand the what i think is still valuable in terms of tech and media literacy mm. and important for everybody to learn but mm. that apple and all the other companies made seamless in the interface what i mean by that is once you open it you're using it and there has been in a lot of uh, surveys, research and saying, you know, young people are really savvy with technology, but you're not. You're not savvy with technology. You're, you're, you are a user. So you know how to use TikTok and Apple, but, you know, you're not very active as a user. You are like in the, in the synonym of the Silicon Valley thing, it's free and you're the product. Being, mm-hmm. You're being served ads too, which is not the same as understanding how the interface works Mm -hmm. and how it works to grab your attention and how it works to serve you ads and how the algorithms may work to serve you what's most interesting. And so this is the kind of stuff I'm teaching and I'm, I'm, I'm going over with my students. And I think that this media literacy and understanding is something that should be taught at early age for all for it, it, across all the educational institutions in the world too. And he, he talks about it in the shadows think, and industry yeah, as well. He does. I think the, the younger we have screens and phones uh, in our hands at, the more we should be media literate. Uh, and the re- one of the reasons why is, uh, and we've talked about this before and we're now, it's a tangent from the completing the year, but uh, some of the other reasons why is those, the, 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 their companies with their own interests that are not necessarily your own interests yep. uh, that are serving this stuff. So Facebook, mm-hmm. Meta, Instagram, Apple, Google, uh, media companies, news outlets that belong to massive conglomerates. I'm not saying they're, I'm not saying that there's out to get you necessarily. Although if you are the product, part of their interest is to get you there as, fast as, as often mm-hmm. as possible. So the mm-hmm. more you understand about the tool you're using, the better you can have an influence or a choice on how you're using it. Uh, and, and you're only one little voice, whereas they're massive corporations with tens of thousands of, em- of very smart employees who are working hard to get millions of people just to use it a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they're not working necessarily in your personal best interest and understanding how that works gives you a little bit of an edge. And this is always why we keep circling back to better understanding yourself is just a key to anything, including, yeah. you know, well, just how you deal with personal relationships, interpersonal relationships with people around you in your life, and also the way that you relate to the computer. And I think that Indistractable yeah. does a good job of highlighting how technology is a tool. Indistractable? Is that a book? Yeah. Uh, I haven't, I've not, I haven't I, Really? Have not, I thought I thought No, there's you, tons of books you that you've read it. that I haven't. I thought you knew about that book. So he it kind of overlaps with the shallows a bit. It's by a guy okay. called Near Il. I think that's how you say it. He worked, 
I think he worked at one of the big tech companies on doing the thing that you just talked about, making yeah. apps more sticky. addictive, sticky. And I forgot my my original because I started, I went on a long tangent. My original thing on understanding tech or being considered to be a, a savvy tech user, mm -hmm. all of the improvements in interface design mm -hmm. make it seamless in such a way that you don't have to think for a single second about how it yep. works. Yep. But there has been a lot of effort built yep. into it. So uh, anyway, all that to say that I think it has value to stop for a second and understand the tool that you're using and not to think that you're a savvy media user just because you opened an app and you started scrolling. Most of the time, yeah. all of that, there's been a lot of intelligence that has gone beforehand so that you don't have to do any thinking. And if you look at it, actually, most of the apps you open are all designed so that there's very little to no thinking you have to do on your part. This is why uh, part of the book and parts... I'm not saying it's good mind. or bad. It's just... Yeah, you know. this is the way it is. The... um. So, and I'm going to make a, a link back to the theme of the episode, yeah. which is the technology is a tool. We have the chance to use the technology to support us, or we can let it, we can go with the flow, which is the same thing we've been talking about. Like who's going to make your, the choice for how you spend your time. Is it going to be you or is it going to be something else, your circumstances or technology or whatever. So my home screen you can't, oh, there we go. Uh, barely, is, uh, you got a tree or something. Yeah, I've got a tree, but I have loads of text. Oh, right. Yes, you do. And it, it's oh, not this icons. Is, part of, is this is part of the image or? It's uh, it's actually part of the launcher that I use on my phone. So when I look at Davina's phone, I, and she's no, got, okay. Okay, she, has, <laughs> she has icons everywhere. I'm like, to me, that started to look weird. The text on my phone says things like, create my day, meditate, read a book, a read an article online, uh, the track my water intake. It's not an icon. It's actually set up so that, or I like to think it's set up to support me with what I'm trying to do day by day, week by week, month by month. You know that some people year. think that we're insane for this, saying things like that. Yes. It just you made me think. I had the friends I had over for dinner on Thursday. They saw I had a post-it note that I completely. I, I wrote the. I put up a post-it note in September thinking, okay, I should worry about my physical state. And I said, I'm giving up uh, chips and beer again, because this is something I gave up in the past. Yeah. Um, anyway, there were a few marks on when I broke and I, I had a beer. Yeah. Uh, anyway, recently in December, this thing has completely gone out the window. I've had a lot of beer and chips. So, but, sure. uh, but anyway, she asked me, oh, what is this thing? Have you kept it up? And I was like, oh, no, I haven't kept it up at all. And I just started talking about where that came from and, and you know that it was you know I, I half-assed in this case structure to to uh, well to not drink beer and not drink, eat chips and to keep up good a good habit on that side and uh, anyway but she was like but that's crazy why would you control yourself like just do whatever you want and like you know uh, which tends to be it, it was a lot of how I thought before and I still think that. But I was like, but yeah, but I know that typically I overindulge in those things and I love them, but they're not good for me. So while I could keep drinking lots of beer and eating lots of chips, and I do, <laughs> I also know that it's mostly good for me if I give those things up. Mm. Uh, so, and, but, she, she, but the, my friend was like, but why would you give something up that you like and enjoy? Like just, you know, enjoy life kind of a, in a hedonistic fashion or it seemed like that. And I, I do tend to adhere mostly to the hedonistic fashion, mostly just like do whatever brings you pleasure. Uh, but I also know that I, I do know that there's a lot of those things that I do out of habit. Mm. And I know there's a, they're not constructive to my life. So anyway, I, I, I think it's interesting to keep a balance. And suddenly it's, it suddenly struck me and it's even more so looking at your book with the atomic habits. And I'm like, some people must think we're completely insane. But it, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, it, but it does, I think it, it is it is a good practice to stop and reflect on what you've done for the year and what you want next. Or, uh, and this is, I just, I just thought of the Ferris Bueller quote, uh, because, and I'm going to, do you know it by heart? I don't know it by heart. I'm going to butcher it. Life moves pretty fast. Life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop once in a while to enjoy it, you might miss it. But it also is, it's the same quote is worth, it, it works for what we're talking about. Life goes really fast. 
So yes, if you don't stop once in a while to look at what you've been doing and just like have no idea what happened and just you live a life of no, no thinking and no consideration. I don't think that's a bad life, but I don't know. I, I, I like to stop and think. It, it, stop and enjoy and smell the roses, but also equally stop and think and look at what you've been doing and what you want next. I think it's cool. You've brought, I think that's a good place to bring the episode to a close. Great. Thank you very much for the conversation. So should we just do a quick recap? I, so I was advocating for, well, because that's just the way that I do it. No particular process. Just stop for a couple of minutes well, or, or an hour and look at what you've done and what you want mm. next. Uh, if you have a partner or a friend, it's cool to do that in a conversation. Or mm -hmm. A family member, a sibling, whoever, somebody that you do that with. Um, I think don't wait and put the responsibility on somebody else. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but mm -hmm. if you are in a couple, just like James was sharing, I think it's great to do that in a couple. It's awesome. Uh, themes and mottos rather than mm -hmm. uh, resolutions and goals for the new mm -hmm. year. Uh, looking at everything that was great and worked and was good uh, for the year and things that didn't work out. Um, as a way of, as a way happened. of, yeah, reflecting on the year and looking at everything yeah. that you've done rather than saying where's this year gone yeah possibly categorizing and and grading uh or putting notes on five uh and i think this is broad but like categorizing might be whatever you think works for your life now there yeah. are, there are obvious categories work or studies love and relationships um enjoyment entertainment health health uh finances Obviously, you choose your categories that work yep. for you. I'm just citing a few that are probably yeah. likely candidates for just about anybody. But you mm -hmm. just look at whatever works for you. Uh, like we did, we did an entire episode dedicated to books last year. So there's a whole thing on media and entertainment. And I'm mm -hmm. certainly going to list the book, the TV shows and movies that I watched this year, because there's a lot of hours dedicated to that. I should probably do something about internet and media, but I spent a lot less time on social media. You know, I'm kind yeah. of wondering about going back on Twitter. I tweeted a couple of things yesterday, but maybe. Uh, anyhow, so all those things, no other structure, or you could put a bit more structure. We've given you a lot of uh, hints and links. And mm. for more structure, there's books. We don't get anything from them, but the classic uh, and seminal Seven Habits of Highly Effective People that you, mm -hmm. that you quoted, Atomic Habits by James Clear. Uh, journaling uh, also gives you a good method. Of, there's a bunch of different journaling methodologies and just Google them. It's just like Google. There's umpteen articles of people that are dying to give you their seven or 10, 15 points on how to do all the stuff that we're talking about. Yep. Uh, and I think that's it, right? I, I would sum it all up with play with it. Yeah. Play with it. That's exactly how I came to discover what works for me. I tried a bunch of stuff. I played with it and the, the stuff I liked doing, I kept doing the stuff I didn't, I didn't. Yeah. Just from experiences and com great conversations like this have the ability to shift everything. And that's yeah. one of the reasons I love doing this with you. Yeah. And it's a, it's a great, so happy holidays, however you celebrate yeah. the end of the year, but usually most people tend to have a little bit of a free time. So there's a lot of opportunities in that time around the end of the year, beginning of next, where I'm sure you can find an hour to do this. Mm -hmm. I find it's a great way to get out of a funk as well. So if mm -hmm. you're kind of feeling a little bit, you know, bluesy or not super active, you're like, well, that's maybe a great time to take stock and look at what happened during the year. Mm. And I usually Agreed. feel energized but from the process. So, uh, yeah, have a great end of year and great holidays. And um, we'll see you next year for the new theme of the fourth season of Teaching Tangents, right? Season four, Teaching Tangents, next year, yeah. Yeah, next year. Uh, don't forget to send us questions or ideas. Uh, we're going to expose or talk, expose. We're gonna, we'll talk about the new topic in the new year. But as we said at the beginning, Please, you know, listen, like, give us a review on iTunes or Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to this or wherever if or comment on YouTube if you watch it. Yeah. Uh, always great pleasure to hear from the few people that watch it. And uh, and maybe there could be more if there's uh, more people giving us questions. I think that's about it. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Thank you. Thank you.